Indie Beacon Radio with host B. Allen Bourgeois. Welcome to Indie Beacon Radio, where creative souls can find help in marketing their creations. You can send questions for each show on Twitter using the hashtag Indie Beacon. Now sit back and enjoy learning about our guest for this show. And welcome to another edition of the Indie Beacon Radio and show. I keep forgetting we're no longer just radio. We're also on Amazon TV and YouTube and stuff. So this is your host, Beyond Bourgeois, and I have with me Laura who I'm um, Patterson, who has a very interesting background that is not only good for people in business, but especially for authors personally, I think so. Um, she is the owner of Vision Edge. She actually created this. And it's a marketing firm that's a bit more than that. So why don't we start off with that, Laura, explain what your firm does. Okay, so our firm, founded here in Austin in 1999, has stayed pretty close to its roots, and we were founded on the idea that we would help companies use process, metrics, data, uh, and everything else around strategy, what we call the upstream of uh, marketing, to improve business performance, improve the value of marketing, and create more customer value, and accelerate our customers' ability to grow. So that has been where we started, and we pretty much that's still what we do today. So I'll be honest with you, that sounds confusing, <laughs> especially for a lot of our authors who don't have a background in marketing or have not gone to college to learn that type of stuff. So in a plain, simple way, can you explain that again? Sure. So today, talking about using data to make decisions about which customers to go after, what markets to pursue, what products to build, things like that. Today we use data, but in 1999, a lot of people still didn't really use data. And they didn't know how to take that data and analyze it in a way to make better decisions, which is where we started. So today everybody talks about it, but we actually do it. And there's processes that enable you to do that well and tools that enable you to do that well. And today, a lot of people, when they do talk about marketing, they think about things like social or content or influencer or email or other kind or video, all kinds of different kinds of marketing. But those are the ways you execute the strategy of marketing. First, you've got to answer all those other questions and then have a strategy behind what you're going to do. And then you can can begin to think about how you'll bring that strategy to life with the things that people are most familiar with, like this radio program or this show. Okay, so in layman's terms, and I apologize for using that word because it always seems to um, degrade people's knowledge and it's not intended that way, but it's just a way of making it simpler for, to better understand. Um, our bookstore that we have, we want to look at who's buying books that we present. Um, not just buying books, but are they buying indie author books? Are they buying award-winning books? Are they buying a specific type of genre? That type of stuff. And then taking that information, we would then create a marketing plan accordingly. Is that fair to say? Yes, you're getting it. It's exactly right. So Alan, you totally get it. So um, if you were to try to figure out what, and what, but more importantly, in addition to knowing that, why are they buying them? So that's an important thing. Why are they buying them? Uh, and what is the benefit they get from buying them? And being able to tell a story that is um, compelling or meaningful or relevant to them. So that it takes data to know the answer to those questions. And why should they buy them from you, those books from you, instead of somewhere else? That's another important question. And all the answers to those questions take data to do them and you have to have a good way to go about getting that information and then when you get the information how do you transform that into something that you can use those are the kinds of things we do and that's a good lead into the next question is how do you take that information how do you learn to take that information and use it and you've actually written several books um and we'll be talking about the newest one a little bit later but in the process of developing this first off um you've got a patent on this type of stuff, database driven information. So congratulations on that. Thank you. But taking that, you then created several books to help people grow along the process. Um, we were talking earlier, you have one book that is approximately 20 years old. So when you first started out, so how did you get into writing the books and what was the reason behind those? Okay, I appreciate you asking that. 
So the first book, which was called Gone Fishing, was really a culmination of work we were just be beginning to do. And we were talking about trying to educate, or I think educate's the right word, customers on the fact that they need to understand how customers buy. So most of our work is all in the B2B space, right? So we're not, we don't sell to, our customers are not selling things in like consumer packaged goods or, you know, uh, come to our restaurant or use our dry cleaners. They're not selling to customers or consumers. Most of our customers sell fairly complex products that have a long sales cycle that involves sort of a consultative approach to the to making a decision. And there are multiple people in that decision making process, right? But the, probably the closest thing that everyday people might experience around that is buying a home, buying their first home, right? That's not something you would just jump in and do. And you probably a young, young family probably wouldn't make that decision with alone. It involve other people in the process. So all of our customers pretty much are like that. And so that means there's a process that their potential customers go through to buy. So the very first book, Gone Fishing, was all about how to understand the customer buying journey, which today everybody talks about, but in 2001 was relatively a new idea. And not only how to understand that, but then to be used data to understand it, to actually understand the steps, and then create performance targets and measures of success for the programs you put in place that were designed to move those customers from one step in their buying process to the next. And we used phishing as sort of a metaphor, and where does marketing begin, and where does uh, marketing end, and sales begin to help understand that that buying journey takes both marketing and sales in order to be successful. So that's essentially the first book, which laid the foundation for the other books because that's when we first introduced the notion of data, right, process, um, customer centricity, and measurement, all things that we pretty much talk about today, still today. And, and forgive me, um, I consider myself very much a layman. Um, I've never had the opportunity to go to college. So a lot of things you're saying sound overwhelming in some respects. Um, granted, I've been doing marketing with authors for over 10 years now. And when you say data, it sounds like a, a mountain full of information that is hard sometimes to digest. But you can actually make it a lot simpler than that, correct? Yes. And the first thing, you know, I, I love a quote by a colleague, uh, Bernard Marr, and he always says, you need to know what you need to know. And that's the important question around data. I think you're right. There's a fire hose of data today, and there is more data than ever, and it's coming faster than ever. And so you can get completely overwhelmed if you just immerse yourself in the data. The real thing to do is understand the question that you need to answer or what it is you need to know, and then go forth and identify the data to help you get that. Maybe the data already exists, like you were talking about, Alan, when you were talking about looking at what are your customers buying right now from indie authors? What genres are they um, most frequently purchasing? Which authors are they most uh, frequently reading, right? You could probably get that from some of your sales information and maybe some other ways. So you would want to answer, those are questions, things you want to know. And when you go get those answers, you have data. Yes, and we only have just about a minute left and stuff. Um, for authors, what would be some of the key things that you feel would help them better understand how to market their book? What kind of data points do you think would be beneficial to them? Well, I, okay, so I also think that's a really good question and I always, always like to say this to other authors. Write about something you have passion about because that comes through in your writing and write about something not only you have passion about but you know something about because that comes through in your writing. Even though you might see that there's another genre that's getting, you know, that's very trendy, but if you don't know anything about that and you're not passionate about that, it's going to be really hard for you to write about it, right? So once you've answered that question, then, the, then you can be looking at, well, how do people frame, what, what's the primary research right now around this topic? Who are the people who read it? Why do they read this kind, these kinds of books? How can I frame the way I market my book in a way that, resonates or is relevant to the people who would typically buy books like mine, right? So you could go start looking at how do others market their books like this? What makes my book different from those that I could actually be selling 
something that's a little different or a little more unique. And why would that matter? It's not just about being different, but why is that difference important? So those would be things that you might want to know, know before you mark, as you're part of marketing your book, and that would take some data. Okay. And we're going to stop right there and let people digest that while we let their sponsors do their thing. We'll be right back. I'm Rox Berkey. And I'm Charles Brakefield. We're award-winning co-authors, Brakefield and Berkey, of the Enigma book series. There are 10 books in these series, with book number 11 planned for release in January 2020. Each story has a central technology focus ranging from identity theft to cryptocurrency and now AI wars. These adult techno thrillers pit cyber good guys against cyber thugs across the dark net. In our world, technology is today's weapon of choice. You can enjoy ebook format, paper, or audible. We want your feedback. Until the next story, thank you. Thanks. Well, hello there, my friends. My name is Randy James, independent voiceover producer in the Dallas, Texas area, available to write and record a 30-second commercial, much like the one you're hearing right now. It's a great way to help increase awareness and exposure to your book title. It's easy to do. Simply call me, and we'll brainstorm on a few ideas, and in a few hours, I'll whip something up and send you a digital file ready to use. Remember, call or text me, Randy James, at 214-762-1900. Four, two. Welcome to IndieLector.store, an online bookstore where the discriminating reader can find award-winning books. IndieLector.store is not a big corporation, so it can give up to 80% of the sales directly to the author. Help us support them by buying a great book at IndieLector.store. Hello, I am the author and poet Denise Bryson. I am the author of The Things That Cross My Mind, Love's Reality, both in book and audio form. I am also noted as one of the best poets of 2011. I have two new projects coming up. One is the Blinky series, where Blinky tells us all about our coins and our bills for our children. I also have a book coming out called Say Ye. It's quotes from Denise Bryson, just inspirational and that will help you along the way. Welcome back to Indie Beacon Radio. Don't forget to like us, follow us, or subscribe to one of our many channels. Now, here is your host for today's show. And welcome back. This is your host, Bianca Bourgeois, and I have with me Laura Patterson, who is talking about her books that she's written relating to marketing, not only for authors, even though we've been talking about that, but also for businesses in general and stuff. And Laura, um, we talked briefly about your first book, but your next book after that was Measure What Matters. What does that mean? Okay, so you probably have heard that everybody wants to know, what am I getting for my marketing dollars, right? People want to know, what are they getting for their marketing dollars? Business owners want to know that. CMOs want to know that. What are, what are we contributing as a result of the investments we're making on behalf of the company? How can we show what marketing is doing to contribute and have impact? And what can we learn from our measures that will help us do better or make better decisions? Those are the things that are important when you're thinking about your measures. Of course, to our point earlier, a lot of those had something to do, you need data for them, but coming back to measures. So because there are so many things you can measure, and I'm, I'm assuming many authors know they can send an email out and it could be, we can measure whether it was deliverable, how many people opened it, how many people clicked through it, right? There's a million things you can measure. And you can do the same with social media, and there's a million things you can measure there. And then you can do that with your website. How many visitors, what pages did they look at? How long did they stay? How, when did they leave? There's so much stuff you can measure today, more and more. Not to mention the stuff you can measure from advertising, for example, and influencer marketing. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. So then the question becomes, well, what matters? What measures actually matter? And so that was a key question. And uh, just a quick story, very quick story, how Measure What Matters came about. So I was reading an article by a colleague on marketing measurement. And it was, it didn't sit well with me. I didn't think it was a good article. This is 2004. So measurement is becoming a pretty big topic. And I began to write a reply to this person on this article. And it was becoming an extremely long reply very long. 
And one of the, the folks in the company uh, who has since retired, but came to me and said, you know, I think you might have the makings of a book talking about measuring what matters. Maybe that you, we should stop trying to write a reply, which seems to be taking you several days. You're in pages and pages. And to instead, step back and see how we could convert that into an outline for a book. And hence, that was the birth of Measure What Matters. And it was really, uh, the, this article this by a colleague was a catalyst for the book. And it was all about really understanding why you want to measure something and the reason you want to measure it is so that you can either improve performance, create more customer value, grow faster, you know, whatever those reasons are. And all the other stuff is just background noise, if that makes any sense. It does. And that actually brings me then to your next book, because not only have you now measured what matters, it's taking it and your book title is Marketing Metrics in Action. So now it's taking what you've learned as far as what matters and actually make it work. Is that right? Yes. So uh, once we started measuring what matters, what we began to do is we actually began to do market research. So my background, my, I, I'm a marketing scientist by training. I started out on the what you would call the research and data scientist side of marketing as opposed to the creative side of marketing. So that's how I got in and my um, in marketing operations, more of that side of marketing that has, again, become quite popular now. But back then, in the early days, people like us were in the broom closet, we were, we were, right, as opposed to being in the front room. But the point I'm trying to make here is we started this research. And we did this research all the, from 2001 all the way through to uh, 2017. And by 2018 or so, our research was being corroborated by other people's research. And until you can come up with something new, there's no point in doing the same old, same old. So after doing you know, 17 years of uh, research, um, we, we've learned a lot about best practices around marketing alignment and marketing accountability, marketing measurement, marketing dashboards, so many wonderful things. And so as we moved into metrics in action, the, the question was, okay, now we know all the stuff that measure, we're measuring the right things, what do we do with it? And how do we convert that into something that is used, can be used by the business? How do we make it actionable? How do we connect that to business results? And so that's what Metrics in Action was done. It was actually a sequel. If you can think of books as sequel, uh, that came out, I think, around 2009, 2010 to um, Measure What Matters. And it was a lot of people were asking for the next iteration of Measure What Matters. It was very popular. But it didn't make sense to really make a, another version of Measure What Matters to me. What made more sense was, how do we help people go from Measure What Matters to the next step? And that's why we did Metrics in Action. And so now that leads perfectly into the next book, which is your latest book, um, Fast Track Your Business. So it's taking all of that information now and really applying it. And it sounds, based on the title, like something that you can quickly do so that your business can grow quicker or at least more on a steady path. Is that right? Yes. So, Alan, you've been around a long time in the business world. Have you ever met a business owner or CEO of a company who didn't want to grow? No. Right. Me either. <laughs> so there's another story to Fast Track, and I will tell it to you very quickly. So those other books, I was very fortunate. I had a, a, publisher, a publisher, Raycom Communications, Rich Hagel, who had a niche around marketing and sales books. And sadly, which has, um, publishing house has been closed. And so uh, Fast Track Your Business was actually something that he and I were talking about and was going to come from his house. But unfortunately, there's that, that we, due to his health, that didn't happen. So I had to come up with a new plan for Fast Track, but let me tell you how it came about. So um, we have a model called the circle of traction. And I, we've had a number of customers over the years who have asked us to come speak at various summits with their leadership team on how to use what we've called, which is also referred to as that growth wheel. You know that circle of traction, that growth wheel that you talk about? And so over the years, we have presented at these summits. And one of the CMOs um, and uh, chief growth officers who I've worked with in numerous companies 
and have done this for several times, asked me to come in 2018 to do, that, to do the presentation. And after the presentation, he said to me, so when are you ever gonna write a book about this, this wheel? He said, it seems like it'd be a great book because it really enca encapsulates or captures the whole process from customer insights all the way to setting outcomes, all the way to positioning and messaging and customer journey mapping and measurement to impl program implementation, to reporting, to operations, the whole wheel, the whole gamut. When are you gonna write a book about that? And I said, I, I don't know, John. Uh, maybe I'll write a book about it. Well, so then, I don't know if you know Jim Obermeyer, who got, uh, has an association, also a radio pro program, uh, and SLMA is the association he's with. He came to me and he said, you know, you done you do these radio programs for for me how do you feel about um hosting one like what you do alan i said oh no no i couldn't do that he said well think about it i have a couple of open slots that need to be filled and i'd love for you to possibly do that and i'm thinking there's no way i can do that i i don't have what it takes to be a, a host but i thought about it and i came back to jim i said okay if i were to do this this is what i said to him if i were to do this i would want to interview or have guests who are local CEOs in Austin, because they never get the, in the limelight, who have really good track records at growing companies to talk about how they grow their companies and the role marketing plays and how important marketing is to their growth. And if we could do that, I would be open to having this conversation. He said, sure, we can do that. You can do anything you want. And so we um, created a, a, a series called Ready, Set, Grow. And then Jim said to me, he goes, you've got the makings of all these great conversations. You've got that growth wheel thing. Why don't you write a book? Here we are, Alan. <laughs> and so that is how Fast Track Your Business, which is all about businesses, how they you can use this growth wheel very practically, step by step, to accelerate the growth of their company, a B2B company, right? And that's the essence of Fast Track. And this is a picture of the wheel. I'll show it to you. I just wanna find one that's, it might be a little hard to see because it's in the color, but that's the wheel. This is a perfect spot for us to go ahead and um, pause and let our sponsors do their thing. We will be right back with more about the book and also then, of course, how people can reach out to you to learn more. We'll be right back. Thank you for watching or listening to Indie Beacon Radio. Our sponsor, IndieLector.Store, is the only bookstore that pays authors their fair share for book sales. Help authors to succeed and enjoy a great book by supporting them at IndieLector.Store. Enjoy a 10% discount with coupon code SHOPPER20 at IndieLector.Store. Coupon valid until December 31st, 2020. That's IndieLector.Store, coupon code SHOPPER20. What started as a love letter to her son has become an international love letter for all parents to their children. Now you can read acclaimed author Shanna Lee Charbonneau's story to your children. When her son was very sick, she calmed him by singing her own song to him. She turned that song into the book, My Mama Loves Me, I'm Her Little Boy. She wrote three more magical books for all parents and kids six and under. Available at Indie Lector, Amazon, and all local and national outlets. Authors Marketing Guild is a membership-owned organization designed to help authors succeed and learn how to better market and sell themselves and their books. Join us at AuthorsMarketingGuild.com and receive so many benefits you'll wonder why you didn't join sooner. That's AuthorsMarketingGuild.com. Welcome back to Indie Beacon Radio. Don't forget to like us, follow us, or subscribe to one of our many channels. Now, here is your host for today's show. And welcome back. This is your host, Bianca Bourgeois. You're watching Indie Beacon Show. And I have with me Laura Patterson, who has her own business called Division Edge, which is a marketing firm that is more than just a marketing firm. It really helps people grow and understand what marketing is. Um, in this particular show, of course, we're talking about authors and stuff. But you had a wheel that you showed in the last half. Could you show that again so that we can sure. get a, a better concept? Like this. Okay. And, and, 
and you follow the wheel. It's a basically pretty simple. Each chapter takes you through the wheel and helps you have gives you very specific. You know, I hail from Missouri and I live here in Texas. So when you come, you know, put that combination together, it's very practical, right? So it's a very practical book, very specific things that you can do, and you know, very instructional. So it's a it's meant to guide you through the process. It won't leave you like it's not like theoretical. This is a book that will help you follow the process. So let's talk about process because this is going to be an interesting aspect. Your first books were published by a publishing house, but this one you ended up doing as an independent. So for you, the process totally changed in how you got your book done. So what was that challenge like for you? It, okay. So when I first, uh, in fact, you, I think you know Arya Brish, who is a longtime friend, longtime personal friend. We worked together for many, many years. Uh, we were both at Motorola, so we've known another a very, very long time, decades, decades. And so when I, he had, as you know, published his book, um, uh, and I had gone to him and said, my publisher is, is, going, is closing his house. Uh, tell me how you got your book published. And he gave me uh, sort of the process he went through. And so I started down the path of bringing together all these independent people. And then I also read... Kawas Guy Kawasaki's book on Ape. Have you, are you familiar with that book? So I read that book. I listened to Arya. I talked to a couple of other colleagues who published self-published books. I learned a lot about this, this industry, which I didn't even realize because I kind of grew up on, inside a publishing house where the notion of a self-published book was in some way or another um, yeah, not as good as a publishing house book, right? So I had to change my whole point of view about that. Anyway, I went down the path of putting this all together. And we have a, a board member who has since passed away, Sonia. And when she first became a board member of our company, one of the things she would say to me is, here's what I'm going, she would say, here's what I'm going to say to you every time I see you or talk to you. Do only what you can do. And let me, I'll give you an example. So one day we were talking and I was doing some work around taxes and bookkeeping and she looked at me and she goes, you know, I've known you a really long time. I, I didn't know you had an accounting degree. And I said, I don't have an accounting degree. She goes, do you know that they actually have people out there with accounting degrees? I said, yes, I know that. She goes, do only what you can do. Go get an accountant, right? This is gonna be important to the story. So then I said, okay, a couple of weeks later, we're working on a, a legal document uh, for a major project, and we're talking about this project, and we're talking about this document, and she goes, since the last time I saw you, did you get a law degree? I said, Sonny, you know I don't have a law degree. She goes, then do you know that people do? <laughs> and I said, yes. She goes, I think you should get one. So remember, do only what you can do. So as I'm going through this process of bringing these people together, editors and, and copywriters and designers and people who lay out books and indexers and proofers, like this whole ecosystem of people who help you bring a book to birth, I could hear Sonia in my dreams, only do what only you can do. <laughs> and so I stepped away from that and I went in search of someone who actually does put books together. And I found, Alan, I found the most amazing thing. There was whole bunches of people who do that. <laughs> and so I was really fortunate and I ended up working with Monkey See Media because they really focus on helping authors thought, who are in the thought leadership space bring their books to life. And she took care of all those things that I was planning to do. She, she, you know, there is, she calls herself a book producer. So she's not a publishing house, she's a book producer. And that was like a remarkable find and she is just amazing. And that is the journey I went on. And it totally changed everything. From the moment I found her, all the anxiety I'd had about how to bring the book to life went away. And I could get back to focusing on the book, which was where my heart was, was in the book. And, and we're just out of time. So if you would, please tell people how they can find you on, um, well, find the book to begin with, and also social media and things of other ways of connecting with you. So the book is both in print and ebook, and we'll have it in, uh, as an audible uh, at the end of the summer. 
Uh, you can be found on Amazon and in Barnes and Noble from our website or directly through those uh, book, bookstores. Uh, the website is visionedgemarketing.com. Uh, so that's just like it sounds, vision like in sight, edge like the edge of a knife, marketing all spelled out, all one word, dot com. Uh, the, it's also, uh, if you're here in Austin, at Book People, and it's also, uh, if you prefer an independent bookseller, we have it at Powell's. Uh, so those are all the different ways you can get it. And um, you can reach me at Laura, P, L-A-U-R-A, P as in Patterson, at visionedgemarketing.com, or connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, I always enjoy connecting with people and learning about them. And, or reach out to me on Twitter at Laura VEM. So those are all the different ways. I'd love to hear from anyone. Great, well, I thank you very much for being here. You have a lot of good information for people in business, as well as the authors that we work with and stuff. So thank you very much, and I wish you the best of success. Thank you, Alan, I really appreciated this. It was a pleasure. Thank you for listening to Indie Beacon Radio, where creative souls can find help in marketing their creations. To learn more about Indie Beacon services, to be a guest on the show, or to advertise on our show, please visit our website. Indie Beacon Radio with the host, B. Allen Bourgeois. Indie Beacon Radio is produced by B. Allen Bourgeois for Authors Marketing Guild, LLC, copyright 2020. Voiceover by Randy James, Lydia Bello, and B. Allen Bourgeois. To be a sponsor of the show or for more information, please email us at info at authorsmarketingguild.com. To be interviewed for the show, please complete the form at radio.authorsmarketingguild.com. Music Always Rejoice by Ramcord.